people might look at the Orville and just see the trailers of and the jokes and just think that it's like it's just one big joke, but it's like no. It's Family Guy, man. It's your Family Guy. It's Star Trek made by the Family Guy. All right, men. This is a dangerous mission, and it's likely one of us will be killed. The landing party will consist of myself, Mr. Spock, Doctor McCoy, and Ensign Ricky. Ah, oh, crap. But. It's not. This is like serious storytelling, and it's good. And it's very good. It's like the kind of thing that after it's over, you're still thinking about it, you know? Yeah, it's just absolutely, absolutely brilliant, man. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. It's... I don't. I don't either. Like we've praised it for <laughs> the past like hour. Yeah, I would recommend it. If y'all haven't seen the Orville, give it a chance. But watch it from the beginning because that's really the best way to experience it. And also to say that. A lot of sort of, well, when I say classic Star Trek, I mean, well, older Trek going up through um, Enterprise. But a lot of the criticisms that older Trek drew was that the first season was generally quite rubbish and then it gets better. But I felt the Orville always had quite a high bar of quality. It sets the bar pretty high when Boris lays an egg. You know, you know what kind of <laughs> show you're getting into at that point. Um, and I would. You know what episodes I would love to talk to you about? The ones involving Topa. Yes. Because <laughs> if you want political commentary set in an epic sci-fi universe, there you go. It's very much modern day uh, influenced, you know, like, and that's, that's what Star Trek has really excelled at over the years is just kind of pushing this like progressive message, but not in like the toxic way that people think about progressivism nowadays, but like, you know, actual people getting along, people resolving their differences without violence progression. And the Orville continues that tradition. Is it sometimes kind of uh, stuck up its own ass? Yes, because Seth MacFarlane is a vain, vain person, and he knows it. At least he's self-aware about it. <laughs> but if Of course you... he's the captain of the ship on his own TV <laughs> show. <laughs> He couldn't cast anybody else. Nobody else could do it. Uh, I, I don't I'm know. I'm Captain Kirk. <laughs> it's a passion project all the way through, though. It, like, despite how vain the man is, he knows how to act. He can sing, and he knows how to entertain people. And I, I think that it's just, uh, it's a very well-rounded series, and I'd love to talk about it some more with you sometime. The only thing that I find quite difficult is actually, like, when he's sitting there in the captain's chair, I still keep imagining him as being Brian Griffin. Oh my god, right? Wow, a song named after a girl. There aren't a million of those already. Name 20! Rosanna, Roxanne, Michelle, Allison, Sarah, Angie, Brandy, Mandy, Gloria, Cecilia, Maggie Mae, Jessica, Nancy, Barbara, Ann, Billy Jean, Layla, Lola, Polly, Helena, Jenny from the block. Name six more! Sherry, Laura, Wendy, Maria, Peggy Sue, Minnie the Moocher. Name five more. Tracy, Jean, Jane, Mary Ann, Eleanor Rigby. Go fuck yourself. Like, his face is so distinct <laughs> that sometimes I'm just like, I can't take him seriously. But <laughs> he's classically trained to the point where he can act his way through things, you know? Like, it's not as distracting as, as you might think it would be. Wee! This is still.